it's CEO here, and welcome back to another video. The Brewster update for New Horizons is just around the corner, but I've heard recently that many of you haven't had the honor of experiencing the Milk Pigeon himself. And if you have played with Brewster before in past Animal Crossing games, then maybe you need a refresher on the joys of Brewster. So today, I'm going to do a little deep dive of the ghosts of Brewster's past. Now let's get into it. Brewster was first introduced in Animal Crossing Wild World for the DS. Shout out to you if you also had a pink DS light like I had. Brewster set up shop in the basement of the museum and his cafe was called The Roost. Unlike A New Horizons, the full museum is unlocked and ready for you to play as soon as you start the game, well after you become a slave for Tom Nook. Once freed from the Tanuki chains, you could go right into the museum and head downstairs to see Brewster for the first time. This was the first iteration of his cafe, the little coffee bar with three stools and a small stage to the left. Now as a child playing Wild World, I had no clue what the stage was for. It wasn't until way later I found out that KK Slider would visit there during obscure hours for a concert. But we're here to talk about Brewster. The first time you try to talk to him, he would flat out ignore you. It's when you go and sit at the counter is when he comes alive and stops being a jerk. Here you could buy a cup of steaming hot coffee, only to be yelled at and called crazy by Brewster if you didn't drink it immediately and wanted it to cool down a bit. No matter how many times you wanted to let it cool, Brewster basically gave you no option but to burn your tongue off. Even the NPCs were meaner in Wild World, and don't even get me started on the villagers. After you burnt your taste buds off, Brewster would then dignify you with a simple coup and say nothing else. And you could only buy one cup of coffee per day. So once you interact with Brewster, there isn't much left to do in here except listen to the sad cafe music in the basement of an empty museum. So fun! Fast forward a few years to Animal Crossing City Folk. This game was basically the exact same game as Wild World. Same types of towns, slightly improved graphics, and of course, with the addition of the city. But for Brewster, it was basically the same as in Wild World, but less pixelated now. Head on over to the museum and fall down the stairs, and there he is, Brewster in all his glory. Although one thing that was changed from Wild World is the cafe sign on the first floor of the museum. It used to say, as the name implies, we offer you respite. I legit had to look up that word respite because I didn't know what it meant. And I'm sure 10 year old me playing this game had no clue either. And who said Animal Crossing was a kid's game? But now the sign says, have a seat and unwind with a cup of coffee. I guess they needed to dumb down the language. For 200 bells, Brewster would offer you the same piping hot coffee as in Wild World. And again, got super offended if you even suggested you wanted to let it cool. Who hurt you, Brewster? I guess that's a step up from being called insane. After you drank your coffee and talked to Brewster behind the bar, he would go into this particularly interesting dialogue. You won't find any of the corporate sludge in my cafe. That's a promise. Sounds like he's taking a dig at Starbucks if you ask me, which also interestingly coincides with the worst financial year Starbucks ever had. Hmm. After that interaction with Brewster, there wasn't much else to do. Cake Ice Slider would perform in the roost during weekend nights, but there wasn't anything coffee related you could do. Fast forward six years and the newest installment of Animal Crossing just released, Animal Crossing New Leaf. This was the second Animal Crossing game I ever played and boy did Brewster get a huge upgrade. The biggest change the Roost received was now it had its own building. However, it wasn't available to players at the start of the game like it was in previous versions. Nintendo actually made it a challenge to unlock Brewster. To unlock the Roost, you had to upgrade the museum to include a second floor and donate at least 50 items to the museum. Once those tasks were complete, blathers of all villagers would suggest the idea of a Roost Cafe. Now it is kind of weird that Blathers would be the one suggesting Brewster, especially since the cafe wouldn't even be in the museum, but I see it as kind of an homage to past Brewster that lived in the museum basements. Players also then had to build the roost and pay 298,000 bells to complete the project, similar to how you have to pay off bridges and inclines in New Horizons. And once the roost was complete, you could finally say hi to Brewster and enjoy his coffee, still priced at 200 bells. However, Brewster's language was toned down even more as he goes through his mild dialogue loop if you want your coffee to cool down. I prefer the wild word language the best by being called insane. Really adds that charm to the game that's now gone. There is a rumor that the milk Brewster puts into his coffee is pigeon milk, and I'm glad it's only virtual me drinking that coffee. After you have your sit down coffee, this game actually has more for you to do. For an extra caffeine boost, you could step up to the counter and buy a to go coffee for 200 bells. Now this is the best coffee in the game if you ask me, because you can go outside and hold the coffee and even drink it. A little piece of Brewster wherever you go. 
You could take five sips of the coffee before it disappeared, and you can only buy one per day. So if you drink your coffee too fast, you're out of luck. Caffeine crash, here I come. You may be thinking, wow, you can drink two whole cups from Brewster. What an upgrade. But wait, there's more. There's a whole mini game with Brewster. This is the most functionality we've seen in the Roost to date. After you've bought six coffees in the cafe, you could go up to Brewster and ask to work for him for the day. Make the coffee exactly how the customers want, or else. You get to wear a cute little barista outfit to twin with Brewster, and then three different villagers from your town come in and order coffee. Every villager has a different coffee order. You could try to guess their coffee orders with trial and error and record everything, or you can be a sane person and look up the coffee guide for the game. It wasn't until I found a guide that I stopped being trash at this mini game. For villagers I like, I'm sure to get their order correct. But for villagers I don't like, I'm looking at you, Egbert. I make sure to screw it up. After the three normal villagers come in, a special NPC will come in to order coffee. It's random every time, but here I got Gracie, and I made sure to get her order right because she's downright scary and a bit. And of course, no mini game is complete without prizes. Depending on how many orders you got right, Brewster would give you his own special blend of coffee beans in varying quality. The coffee beans serve no purpose except as an item you could display on your house or could be the perfect finishing touch if you built a cafe. After accumulating a certain amount of correct orders, Brewster would then give you a special prize that were all coffee themed, with the grand prize being Brewster gyroids. Now, if you've only played New Horizons, you'll only know one gyroid, that's Lloyd. But Brewster had his very own gyroids in his likeness. It's pretty certain we'll see the return of Brewster and regular gyroids in the Brewster update for New Horizons. So this brings us to the update for New Horizons coming out soon. We've been waiting so long for his return, and finally Nintendo has announced Brewster is coming to the game and will have his cafe in the museum again. It's a shame we won't see the return of the Roost as a building, but I'm still excited for his updated HD cafe in New Horizons. We've only seen glimpses of what's inside his cafe, but we do know it will be on the second floor of the museum and will be open for 24 hours, the same as a New Leaf. I also suspect there'll be a mini game component similar to the one in New Horizons, and we'll see the return of gyroids as prizes from Brewster, and possibly a store with regular gyroids we can buy as well, since that's another feature left out on New Horizons. Nintendo says there will be an Animal Crossing Direct sometime in October, and it's speculated that it will be October 15th, as that's Brewster's birthday. We also know the updates outlined in this Direct will be coming to the game in November, and that we will be getting more than just Brewster. Probably some updates to the Thanksgiving Turkey Day event, and hopefully some more items and features in general. I'll be live streaming the Animal Crossing Direct over on Twitch. Follow me over there to get notified when I go live, because right now we don't know when the Direct will be. If you're excited about Brewster's return, definitely come out and hang with us during the live stream so we can hype up together. I hope you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe as it really helps the channel out, and I'll see you in the next video.